Hmm. Welcome. Put your thoughts in the comments <clears throat> and we'll go through them. Tingolas. Not. Not what was that? Not what that wasn't was what I was expecting. I can't even get my words out. I um, yeah, did not expect that. Did not see that in the foreseeable future, based on the way that we've gone about things in the last eighteen months. Um, we haven't been great in the last couple of weeks. And potentially that could have been brewing. You know, you go back to the Richmond first half. Um, you go back to last week, the way we started the pretty much most of the game until the last eight minutes. The Essendon game. Um, Collingwood, we won. That was all right. And then round one, obviously, Geelong. Um, actually, yeah. Um, Marshy's goal at halftime was the best part of this horrible night. Some people are saying um, that four days, I think we've played three games in 11 days, back-to-back -back interstate, and then a four-day break isn't great uh, in terms of a fixture. But I really don't want to use that as an excuse, especially when we talk about being the fittest team in the comp only six weeks into the year. We do have a young team, and obviously Filippo, Owens, Naz, Garcia, Wilson, Caminiti, you know, they're all not seasoned bodies yet. And they're going to go through these sort of grinds against, you know, an experienced team like the Bulldogs. They are very experienced. They've been battered from pillar to post during the week. And you kind of knew... Um, that this was going to... That we're going to respond. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what the Bulldogs did. They responded. They played the way. It reminded me it was eerily similar to a couple of years ago. If you remember, we lost by 111 points. Um, that was Brett Radnera. era. I didn't foresee that happening again. And halfway through the third, I genuinely thought that this was going to be the case. That we were going to lose by 100 points again. And I was just scratching my head a little bit. Um, you know, we kicked the second goal of the game. It was six all, Caminiti. But apart from that, forward line did pretty much, and I, I'm sorry to say, but they pretty much did fuck all. Um, sorry to drop the F-bomb. I know there are potentially kids watching, but I'm just... I, I couldn't believe when people saw that Max King was injured last week that they said, I'm glad we're going to play better without him. Are you joking? Look at what Norton did to us tonight. He kicked six. He could have kicked ten. And people are questioning whether we're better with Max King or not. He wouldn't have been the difference tonight. But he would have at least given them something to worry about. I put it to a tweet at halftime. And I'm happy with the way I phrased it. We had no fear factor tonight. There was nothing, no player, no setup that scared the dogs. That put fear into them. That made them second guess. It's a single thing. It was a training drill tonight. It was a training drill. 26,000 on a Thursday night in a big game. 14,000 of them were gone at three-quarter time. Like, we just did not look interested tonight. We, it just, it just, I don't even know what to say. Like, I thought we were beyond these sort of shit shows. And we... We had a tough couple of weeks away from home. I get that. But when you're a fit AFL site on your home deck, you don't just throw in the towel like that. We threw in the towel. We just let them do what they want. I've never seen a midfield get run around like ours. I've never seen a forward line be so inept of hitting the scoreboard, not knowing where the goals are. The back line was toweled up, and I hate that because the back line all season has been the one fallback. But we can say they've been very good. They keep us in games. Even last week, we only conceded 80 points to a very good GWS side. Tonight, that was beyond that halfway through the third. And some of the decision-making, 
you know, I think it was the precedent was almost set in the first play of the game where we did something really good. Rowan Marshall got the ball, went for a very, very risky kick in the middle of the ground and missed it. And they turned it over and they scored from it. And I thought, okay, well, we're trying to be high risk, high reward. But for the rest of the game, we just we just didn't even attempt to take the game on. I was seeing how Bailey Dale was doing everything that he wanted off half back. Everything that he wanted off half back. And I was just thinking, is are we going to get Naz and Sinks and Bonner to go for those kicks a bit more? Even when I saw Naz going sideways, I thought, well, what are we doing here? What's the point of getting what's the point of having good ball users if they're not taking those kicks? Caminiti, to his credit, I thought he was the only forward that really let up. And I hate saying this, but this is the sort of game where I need to call out certain players in certain situations. And I did not think Tim Membry led from the front until the game was done in the last quarter when he kicked three junk time goals. That's the really disappointing part. The leaders didn't stand up until the game was gone. Until the pressure was off, until the dogs decided they weren't chasing anymore. They were just going to go downhill ski and kick a couple of cheap goals and not worry about what the rest of the Saints players were doing. Rowan Marshall, uh, he got beaten, I reckon. I don't, I don't see the stats. Um, I've got them in front of me here, actually. Um, 189 kicks, 146 handballs. Not good enough. Look at the dogs. 263 kicks. We allowed them to kick the ball. And that means there's no pressure. They can take all the time in the world. I've never seen so many broken tackles. Their disposal, this is how little our tackle was, our pressure was for the day. 78% was their disposal efficiency. That's ridiculous. Nearly 80% for the entire game. That means we have no pressure on the ball carrier. We are not chasing. We are not harassing. We are not putting any sort of inferred pressure on them. We're letting them do whatever they want. 78%. 59% inside 50 efficiency. I mean, the free kick count, 8 to 21 their way bit skewed there, but I really don't give a shit about that stuff. The four-day break, the free kicks, that's irrelevant. This was an attitude problem too. It wasn't just fitness. We did look gassed, but it wasn't just fitness. There was so much more to it. We 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 need to get this forward mix right. Butler was the sub, came on, did nothing. I thought Zach Jones was actually stiff to get subbed off because he was one player that was trying to do something. Total clearance is 30 to 32. I mean, I can give you all the stats, but at the end of the day, the scoreboard is the main stat. Marks, 148 to 74. We usually have 100 for the day, for the uh, for the year in a game. We're down. They usually have 112. They were up 36. That's how easy it was for them. So it was an absolute cakewalk. And 4 to 15 contested marks. I've never seen, I've never seen that so skewed. So skewed. And they still laid more tackles than us. They had more of the ball. They had more shots and more tackles. That should never happen. We should be laying 72 tackles. They laid 72. And they still beat us by 10 goals. That's how poor we were. And next week, we've got Port Adelaide in Adelaide. Jesus, we have to turn this around big time. And it's been brewing. You know, we, we, we nearly pinched it last week. But it was, again, waiting too late. The Giants parked the bus. They put the cue in the rack, and we got some goals late. The Richmond game. We started. We had a goal to halftime. And I said at the time, if we do this against the Giants, which we did, and if we do this against any reasonably good team, the Doggies are reasonably good. I still think we should have beaten them tonight if we played Saints footy. We didn't. But I said that at halftime of the Richmond game. If we do this any other week, apart from when we play the Richmonds and the Norths and the West Coast, maybe not even West Coast now the way they're going last week, we're going to get done. We're going to get smashed. We need to be going into these games and putting our stamp on it within the first bloody five minutes, not waiting until the opposition have their way and we're two, three goals down. We seem to just love chasing games. Geelong, chasing the game. Pies, not bad, but we still started slow. Then you've got Rit- um, Essendon, started all right, but then went, we just coughed it up. Uh, Richmond, let them do what they want and chased. Uh, the Giants, let them do what they want and chased. Today, chased from the start. It's just hard to watch. And 
like just seeing the groans, seeing even just not even that. It was just no emotion in the crowd because we were all dejected, that we were sapped of all excitement. Even late, you know, kicking a couple of goals, I didn't think to clap because it was meaningless at that point. We need to be starting games well. Our first terms are absolutely huge problems, huge problems. Almost in every game bar one or two out of six, we've been okay. Uh, we've been poor. We just don't know how to come out of the blocks. It's it's like we need 30 to 45 minutes of football to really get a grasp on the game. And that against good teams is not going to work. We have a young squad. I know that. But there are leaders around them in every line and really none of them stood up tonight. That's the most disappointing thing. You know, Wilkie, Sinclair in the back line, stand up. Jack Steele in the midfield. What were the stats? Player stats, by the way. So the one, the top six fantasy players, stats-wise, was Bulldogs players. The best for us was Marcus Winhager at 29 disposals. Jack Steele, 27 20 handballs for our captain. I want you kicking the ball, Jack. Why are we handballing so much? Even Ross Lyon said it a few weeks ago. We are not a handball team. He said that after the Bombers game. We are not a handball team. I feel like we've handballed more than kick the last three weeks since then. Are we going to absolutely... Like, 20 handballs for Jack Steele, who's actually a reasonable kick? That's ridiculous. Um, but then you go on the bottom end. And you've got, how many did, Cal Wilkie had 15, Dan Butler only had three, Zach Jones seven, Liam Stocker 12, Mateus Filippo nine, really quiet game, Anthony Caminiti eight. Without Max King in the forward line, we just have no fear factor and teams aren't afraid of us. And the doggies relished that. They loved that they could just run off us. Defensively in the forward line, especially with Dan Butler on as a sub, Jack Higgins was left to do all of the pressure acts. Caminiti was trying, but obviously he's a big lump of a lad. He's not going to get around easy. Sharman was thrown back for a lot of the game. Didn't really work. And then Bailey, look at this. Bailey Dale, Jason Johannesson had 71, 72 disposals between them. And I said during the week, if Bond kicks three and as he's 25, we get done. He kicked three, had 24, we get done. I mean, the writing, you, you can predict how the Bulldogs could have beaten us very easily. And that just happened. Bailey Dale, 867 metres gained, absolutely ripped us apart. 29 kicks out of the 39 disposals. That is what I want from Jack Steele and some of our better kicks of the football. Not handball. We panicked all day long. This is a game that I really thought we'd win. Like it wasn't, I know it was a 50-50, but I really backed us to respond after last week, especially the way we finished the game, just some momentum. And pretty much from start to finish, we were just not even there. Let's go through some of your comments and then I'll um, I'll wrap it up. Thanks for everyone for enjoying me rant a little bit. Uh, J-Max is apart from our forward, midfield, backline, wings and coaching, we are almost there. <laughs> God. Um... Keith says, unwatchable. I wouldn't say season over, but definitely next week. If we go to two and five, that makes it very, very difficult. 10-6 on turnovers. 66 points. Wow. Bailey says, all game. We didn't man up. They ran rings around us, and they made us look like a bottom four side. And when we got the ball, we overused the handles and no talk at all. Absolutely spot on comment. No talk. I didn't hear any chat, even in the first quarter. And it wasn't a big crowd. It wasn't a loud crowd. You could hear the players. I couldn't hear any of my boys. Um, Mitchell says, three to four Saints attacking the coalface. Bulldogs numbers on the outside. Spot on, mate. Every time the ball hit the deck, we all went in for the ball selfishly. We couldn't back each other to win the contest. And there was always dogs on the outside. They spread, killed us on the turnover. Andrew says, worst midfield in league, I think. None hit targets or kick goals. Very uninspiring. Again, did Machito Owens get put in the middle at all as a ruck rover like I want him to? Can we just unleash him there for one game? We put Filippo there. We put, I think I saw Stocker in there late in the game. Why are we avoiding Mitch Owens in there? What is what's the what's the issue there? 
Matt says, Stocker, Cordy, Battle, Wilkie. One tackle between them. Luke says, Tonight showed us that there is a problem with our club. Our team has been pulled apart quite easily the past three or four weeks. And, I mean, even on the kickouts, we had so many good options down the middle open. We didn't even look there. We were so we were so focused on the wide. And that just tells me we we're playing safe football and we we're too afraid to take that kick. I thought we were a run-gun team and, and we want to run and spread and burn teams off the turnover. We haven't been able to do that for weeks. Since the Collingwood game, essentially. Looking at the ladder, we might actually finish bottom four. Shit in all facets across the ground. Things won't change. And if you're a St. Kilda fan, please boycott the club. That's an overreaction. I still think that's an overreaction. I know we're really disappointed. But to me, that is too much. Probably shouldn't even put that up, to be honest. Seventy-six more marks. I know that's that's ridiculous. Uh, I have the moments. I didn't expect that. Boys took the night off. Does anyone actually want to condone that we've played three games in eleven days and the fixture is absolutely stuffed because of that? And two of those games are interstate. Surely that would have had some effect, but to that effect, really don't think the boys would have used that. I mean, yeah, Joshua was saying three games in eleven days. I know the fixture's shit, but aren't we? Aren't they elite athletes that, like, don't we prepare for that? Maybe have an easy week on the track, you know, like that sort of thing. That's another thing. Um, I think it was the first quarter of the second quarter. Literally saw Jack Higgins in the back pocket clearing the football. And I turned to Michael and I'm like, it's like a goal, one goal to four at this point. The game's still on. Why the hell is our small forward in the back pocket clearing the football to no one? Like, I don't understand that. We, some teams, like, I feel like we don't have a back line. Tonight, we didn't have a back line midfield forward line. We just had a back line and then a forward line that pushed into the midfield, created chaos. The midfield gets the ball. There's no forward line to kick to. Hence why we handballed it around and didn't know what we were doing. Because <laughs> there was no one to kick to. I just, I don't understand why our forwards push so high up. Keep a couple deep. We never did. We never kept one or two targets deep for that opt-out kick. They were always pushed so high up to the point where when we got the ball on the turnover, there was no one to kick to. It was a crowd of players because they were so high up the ground. Yeah, actually, that's a positive of the night. Garcia, awesome to see him play a full game. Eight tackles, again, off the back of his seven last week. I did wish he took that shot, though, from 55 when he took the player on. He, he went for a nice kick and set up a play, but I just wanted to take a ping. He's got a very nice left foot, and the game warranted it. You know, just some excitement from a youngster. And it was good to see him kick his first goal of um, league football as well. So congrats to, um, to Garcia, although very disappointing uh, game overall. Ross Lyon spoke about his still confidence in Kilda's long-term plan and the direction they are going in the next few years. Obviously, it's not the immediate future we're talking about. We are plan planning for the next two to three years. But at the same time, you don't see a lot of these top teams, even when they're in those development years, get done by 10 goals the way we get done by 10 goals. Uh, Paddy Dow, Jack Hayes, you reckon next week, um, Caleb? You reckon they're straight in? There's going to be a lot of players that are you know, droppable after this performance. The entire team is droppable, to be honest. Just so heartbreaking. We all want six. We all do, you know. We're all so... And, I mean, that's where this, this frustration comes from at the end of the day is the frustration is from the passion and from the impatience to see these this team succeed. Um, but we have to continue to be patient. That's the thing. That's the really frustrating thing. You know, Filippo, Owens, Naz, Caminiti, Wilson, Garcia, Collard, Hasty. We've seen all these boys come through in the first six weeks. It's going to be a journey, but uh, it's, I know it's going to have these games, but I just wish, I wish they just, it wasn't this week, you know? Not against the dogs. I just can't stand losing to the dogs. Uh, the coaching staff must take full responsibility for that lacklustre performance. I think it was a balance of coaching and a, and a balance of player mentality, to be honest. Uh, where is this one? Uh, they're absolutely cooked mentally and physically. The last three weeks had pretty much broken them. Feels like the worst loss in 15 years, but three games in 11 days. Frustrating. Yeah. Nah, well put there. We, get, we do get a bit of a break now, though, so that evens it out. We've got, what, next Saturday night? Or is it Friday night? I can't remember. 
against Port, but it's it's going to be a tough game. But if we win that somehow, if we win that, because we never win in Adelaide, um, yeah, it, it, who knows? Andrew says the keepings off football is so boring, garbage. Let's trust your bloody teammates. I know it just didn't seem like we trusted each other tonight. Hence why we all went in for the football at the same time. It was just a, a, a you know me me me. Let me get it. You know I'm the better player sort of thing. Just back the back your teammate to get it and stay on the outside and give him an option. Yeah, our bloody bogey side. We never play them at Marvel. The one time we did, we lose last year, and then we play them back at Adelaide Oval again next week. So it's going to be a big week on the track. Jack Hayes, Paddy Dow, please, you know, return. I think uh, Liam Henry's probably a couple of weeks away. We've lost a bit of zip without Liam Henry and Mason Wood. You know, you forget about that, just how good they were even against the pie. Oh, Mason Wood went off early, but Liam Henry, how good he was against Collingwood in his last game for us. Yeah, we, we don't want to be playing Scott Waters football anytime soon, that's for sure. Paul Walsh, the second Ruckman, tall back, tall forward, strong midfield with strength, worst being Bulldogs and Bombers are average sides. Yeah, those were two games that when I saw the fixture, I thought two wins, two wins, um, and we've dropped both. One, I can take the Bombers one, and we, we, we win this one, we redeem ourselves to lose both, both at Marvel. Both games at Marvel this year we've lost. Terrible night, Sanders. On that note, I think I'm just going to wrap it up, to be honest. And Dougal Howard, you know, do we bring in Dougal Howard next week? Port Adelaide have got a fairly tall forward line. They didn't have Jamara or Liberatore today, and that was still no problems. You know, teams have their issues. They have their shortcomings. They have their injuries. They have their you know, short turnarounds. They still don't put up that sort of thing, I don't think. Um, but we looked very flat, and now we've got an eight- or nine-day break. No excuse to look that flat next week. So on that note, saying is a shocking night of footy. We lose by 10 goals. Appreciate over 600 of you watching. Um, it's not going to be a fun week on the channel, that's for sure. But two and four, season's not over. Um, we've got a lot of youngsters Hopefully, with the break, a couple of extra days this week, um, get Jack Hayes back, hopefully. Paddy Dow. We need some more rotation through that midfield. Hunter Clark, hopefully coming back soon. Mason Wood, Liam Henry, Dougal Howard. Um, and I haven't even mentioned him, but next week, Max King should be back. So hopefully we can start getting some troops back. Jimmy Webster as well, two weeks away. Um, yeah. <laughs> Cars telling me to wrap it up. So on that note, saying is thank you very much. We're on Instagram as well. I know it's not the greatest game to promote, but if you want to follow us on Instagram at Saints TV Pod, YouTube as well, please subscribe. We're nearly on eleven thousand, um, and we're on Facebook as well. So wherever you are watching this, I really appreciate it. Terrible Thursday night um, at Marvel Stadium. We go down by sixty points to the doggies. Uh, and now I've got to think about it for, for the rest of the weekend because it's a Thursday night. So take care, Sainers. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Thursday night. Enjoy tomorrow and then obviously the weekend. Um, and I'll see you next week. As always, go Sainers. See you guys. <laughs>